Ahem. Is this thing on? <laughs> hey, it's Graham Breitenstein, the host of This Week with Drunk Astrology, the podcast. And you know, at the top of every new year, it can be so easy to fall into a mindset that's like, well, it's a new year. I guess I'll like do some goals. I don't know, a couple friends are doing dry January. Maybe I should do dry January. But you know what? That's not you, and that is most certainly not me. You know, we start 2024 with Mercury, the planet of our thinking mind, stationing direct. So that means the planet that rules the way our brain functions is stopped. So we experience some brain fog, a lack of clarity. We might be a little hungry for change, a little hungry to set some goals, but we're not functioning at our full potential. That's okay, because your astrologer here has created a free resource for you to clear through your mental muck. I'm calling it the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, and it is absolutely free, 0.00. Free 99. This thing is full of science backed prompts around goal setting and astrological insights because the timing of setting your goals is just as important. And that's exactly what astrology teaches us. So, to get it, you're going to go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. And in less than a minute, you're going to download your PDF and you're going to start getting to work. And here's what's cool. In 2024 and for the next 20 years, Pluto, the planet of power, it's the source of our power as a collective, changes into Aquarius. So that means the source of power for all of us to tap into lies in Aquarian themes. What are Aquarian themes, you might be asking? Aquarian themes are community, collaboration, and communication. You are not going to be working through this journal alone. No, 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 no. You and I are going to be working together to fill this out and to manifest our most amazing year ahead. And here's the challenge. I implore you to bring in people that you admire, people that you respect, people that you love, people that you care for, whether that's family, friends, your partners, your co-workers, your teammates. Bring them into this process. The more we share this resource, the more we are all tapping into the power that is available to us. It is no longer the solo Capricorn journey. Pluto's been there, done that since 2008. For the next 20 years, our power lies in community. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do this together. We're going to share this with the people that we love, that we respect, that we want to see win. So again, go to drunkastro.com backslash amazing year. It is also, if you scroll up, the first link in the show notes. Download that PDF in less than a minute. And you and I are going to do this together. Don't miss this opportunity to create your most amazing year You're going to thank me later, I promise. So now that you got your journal, why don't we hop into this week? Happy Sunday, astro lovers. Welcome to the next episode of What's Up Astrology, where we look at every freaking thing that's going on down here on Earth, (laughs) and we... Turn our heads up to the sky and ask the cosmos, what are you doing? What's the plan? What are you trying to say? What are you trying to tell us? That's what we're here to talk about. So let's do our weekly question, shall we? Turn your gaze upwards and just ask, universe, what's up, astrology? What's happening? What's going on? Now, I will just go ahead and tell you that this episode is pre-recorded on Thursday, January 14th. So, I'm a few days early on the recording, uh, but by the time you listen to this, it'll be, you know, it'll be Sunday. So, as we know, in the political and global climate that we are currently living under, 
a lot can happen in three days. So we'll revisit this again for next week's episode um, and, you know, do a little reflection back um, because Sunday, today for you, Jupiter squares Uranus, the only square between Jupiter and Uranus this year. And it is a, I believe it's going to prove to be quite a monumental day. Now, we already know and we're already kind of expecting for everyone here in the States and everyone worldwide that's, um, that might be listening that the lead up to the inauguration on Wednesday the 20th, starting the 17th, there's already Twitter buzz feeds and all kinds of technological communication happening around groups mobilizing, you know, for their collective efforts. Um, you know, it's we really have a, a polarity here. You know, the hashtag stop the steals versus the hashtag 25th Amendment. And at this point, Donald Trump has been impeached now twice by the House of Representatives, and now it's up to the Senate to see if it's going to go all the way through. So we're going to see how the impeachment process plays out, um, especially with this Jupiter square Uranus on Sunday. But we're also going to see potentially risky and bordering on foolish um, mobilizations in the name of freedom. Jupiter wants to, uh, you know, wants a new way of thinking, wants the truth to win. But in this case, we have two sides that have very different versions of the truth. Um, So there's that. And then Uranus wants to break out. Um, Uranus wants, you know, it's a dot, dot, dot in the name of freedom. I march in the name of freedom. I mobilize in the name of freedom. um, I, I, I perform an insurrection on Capitol Hill. Um, You know, there's all those buzzwords that are that are, you know, creeping around right now. Um, Revolution. Um, What's the word I just said? Of course, here I go. (laughs) Here I go. It's Uranus, right? It's faster than I can even keep up. Um, But those those buzzwords that that we now hear, you know, insurrection, revolution, mobilize, Um, You know, if you want to have some fun, you know, really look into the definitions of those words and and you find an an interesting it's interesting how these these buzzwords start to define a moment in time. Um, And we're living under this Capricorn new moon energy from last week, um, Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific. Um, And, you know, this week we're going to have the the quarter moon. That's the halfway point between that Capricorn new moon and the. Um, the the following Leo full moon that happens on on the the last week of January, so we, we have we have a lot we have a lot swirling around and um, we have a pseudo quiet week this week, but because the energy is so wild and because when we talk about the moons, you'll see the first three days of the week are quite disruptive and quite. Um, friction they 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 produce quite a bit of friction down here on earth and 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 we're gonna we'll discuss that when we talk about the moons um before we get going just some shameless self-promotion here um there are there's a, a pretty big announcement um coming on monday tomorrow the 18th um i hope that you follow the drunk astrology account or you are already signed up to receive the newsletter um because if you are you already know what that news is um by this point um but if you're not yet on the newsletter which you can sign up for on drunkastro.com there's a little pop up that'll come uh, just a few seconds once you load the page um or if you um if you didn't if you don't see the pop up which is kind of hard to miss um, you can scroll to the bottom of any page on the website and um, put your email address in and you'll, you're automatically in. Um, but if you're not on that newsletter yet, go to Drunk Astrology on Instagram and uh, pay attention tomorrow because there is a big announcement for something coming up. And I believe that anyone listening to this podcast will want to be a part of it. So 
There's that. Also, if you want to dive into your 2021 and plan it by the planets, go to drunkastro.com. Go to the reading section and book your 2021 Planet by the Planets reading. It's only available until March 3rd. And we look at all your cosmic hotspots for love, for money, for career, and also moments in time uh, throughout the year where you can expect some planetary turbulence and where in your life you can expect that turbulence to, to play out. Also, Plant Astrology, the how-to guide for picking plants by the planets is my pre-recorded course um, that I launched last month and it is still available. You can go to drunkastro.com. There's a little announcement bar at the top of the website that sends you straight to the course. It is a really fun course, very informative. If you're someone who loves plants or you feel like you kill plants, um, this is this is a course designed for, for everyone. It's super easy to understand, full of a lot of plant information, lots of astrology. Um, I created my own um, astrological formula for the course. So it's a lot of fun. I encourage you to get in. It's still available at a reduced rate. Um, so get in before the price goes up because who wants to deal with that? <laughs> okay, now let's get into, let's get, if you, uh, if you are someone who does the moon calendar or you, um, you know, you follow the moon phases and write them down, uh, now's the time to have your um, moon planner out and your pen ready because we're going to talk about the moons. So today on Sunday, 17th, we've got um, the moon in Pisces. Um, Void at 7.44 p.m. Pacific, again, adjust for your time zones, Um, going void with a sextile to the sun. So that really made this weekend beautiful, beautiful for connection, dreamy, flowy, Um, just just an overall great um, Piscean, you know, long baths, long showers, you know, romance, you know, cuddle up, uh, Cozy blankets, all of that, you know, that good stuff that satisfies your soul. Now, the moon goes into Aries late at night at 11.07 p.m. And it's in Aries Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Inauguration Day, going void at 12.28 a.m. with a square to Pluto. Now, I know I mentioned this last week, but that makes Aries is answering to Mars and Taurus going void with a square to Pluto. Mars square Pluto is a war aspect. So coupled with today's Jupiter square Uranus, which is, you know, revolution in the name of freedom. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hey, I want to get in your ear real quick. There are a lot of spiritual viewpoints and perspectives that you can subscribe to. You know, there's astrology, numerology, feng shui, there's Akashic records, there's past life regressions, there's destiny cards. There is just any number of ways that you can tap into the universe to get insight, to help you create the life you want to live, to create abundance and prosperity, love and relationships, connection. All those things. And I recognize that there is a lot and that at times it can be overwhelming and it can be hard to figure out who to go to. Who can I listen to? Who can I trust? So this is why I created the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series. If you're not already listening to it, it's available wherever you're listening to this podcast already. But you can also watch each interview on drunkastro.com. There's a whole page there for it. And I've linked the series in the show notes. So in this series, one, I want you to I want you to know all the d- different tools that you can use to manifest big this year because the life that you want, the life that you deserve, it is waiting for you and there are a number of methods to consider, spiritual and non-spiritual. Okay, I'm in this series, I'm not only talking to Tali from the Astro Twins, not only talking to Christina Hollinger, a feng shui expert about how to feng shui your living space, your workspace, to create a space that is high vibration and that attracts the life you want to live. I'm not only talking to a crystal expert about what crystals are good for the energy of 2024's unique energy. 
not only talking to a symbologist, a destiny card reader. Have you ever heard of that? Because I hadn't heard of that until I met um, CJ, who is the destiny card reader I bring into this um, series. Um, I'm not only talking to spiritual folks. I'm talking to an intimacy expert because love and relationships are at the top of a lot of our list, single or not single. We can all learn how to be more intimate with each other, be more authentically expressing ourselves. I'm also talking to Elise Joan, a beach body super trainer and longevity expert, because it's not about just creating an amazing life. It's about living a long life, one that you love, one that you want to be healthy for, one that you want to actually stay in for the long haul. So this series is set up to to get you in alignment from all different angles. So if you haven't already, go catch up on the episodes that have already aired. And the new episodes that are coming, every single Wednesday, a new episode will drop until the series is finished. So go back, drunkastro.com. There's a whole page for how to manifest big in 2024. All the videos are there. Watch the interviews. There's a link to this in the show notes. It'll get you right where you need to be. Okay? We're doing this this year. You're doing this this year. Your your, um, Manifest Big in 2024 journal, that is the foundation of what you're going to use this year to set goals that you're actually going to achieve. Now, all these other tools in the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, these are all going to enhance your vibe, enhance the vibe of your living space, your heart set, your mindset, your body set. You are going to be, there's no way by using the Manifest Big in 2024 journal, by tapping into the How to Manifest Big in 2024 series, this is all you need. It's all you need, okay? So in case you haven't got into it, this was just a little reminder. needed to get that in your ear. Let's get back to this episode and keep up this vibration. With it being an Aries moon going void with the square to Pluto, we can really see a lot of um, mobilization and aggressiveness. Um, Aries also rules weapons, so we're going to pay attention to guns and knives and just, we're, we're just, let's pay attention, you know, be safe, be careful. Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty contentious. Now, Monday, the moon has some sextiles, sextile to Saturn and Jupiter, and a conjunction to Chiron. So although it's a harsh closing aspect Wednesday morning, Monday is still a great day to, to you know, mobilize for yourself and, um, you know, get moving on the things that you need to get done. Tuesday, the moon has a square to Venus and a sextile to Mercury. So just a little bit of, just a little bit of tension, a little bit of friction, um, a lot of news with that sextile to Mercury in the morning. So let's pay attention to what, you know, what the news has to say Tuesday morning. And then on Wednesday, uh, the moon has squares to the sun and Saturn, um, and it goes void with that square to Pluto. So Wednesday is really the the hot day when it comes to the moon, and we're going to talk about an aspect that takes place on Wednesday, too, that's going to make it particularly potent as well. Um, We also have the quarter moon um, in Taurus. The moon goes into Taurus at 1055 in the morning. And moves into its quarter moon phase at 1.01 p.m. So a Taurus quarter moon, halfway point between the Capricorn new moon and the Leo full moon next week. Um, you know, it's, it's getting our plan together. Whatever you manifested or whatever intentions you set under that new moon in Capricorn last week. Um, this is now that, that point. It's an, it's an earth sign. Um, so we're looking at two earth sign energies that both want the plan, that both want the work. But now Taurus wants, you know, to balance and to harmonize and to inject some, you know, artistic, creative sensibilities, romantic sensibilities. Um, You know, how do you want to see these things um, plan out? And, you know, how do you plan to make them plan out, Uh, you know, for for your intentions for the year, but, you know, for the next two weeks or for the next week at this point, um, 
until that Leo full moon, you know, plant seeds, plant seeds, plant seeds. Taurus is like the soil um, and Capricorn is, you know, the, the growth that we see from the soil. You know, Virgo is the one, you know, tilling the land um, when it comes to earth signs. And then, you know, Capricorn is the, you know, the beautiful plant that we see on the other side. So this is really your, your, your action plan and mobilizing it and getting it together, you know, clearing out what, what, you know, what's in the way. Like if, if you're in your own way or, you know, something, if whatever has come to light over the last week since the, the new moon, now it's time to like, okay, clear that out. Let's readjust this and let's change this. Um, now, so again, the Taurus moon uh, starts at 1055 in the morning on Wednesday and the moon is in Taurus all day Thursday and Friday going void at 128 p.m. with a trine to Pluto. So Pluto was right neck and neck with that Capricorn new moon last week. So now the Taurus moon trining Pluto. You know, how do we want to change? Uh, what, what's our relationship with our with authority figures, power, you know, powerful people, power dynamics, um, really flowy aspect and just really about, you know, trans, transforming the plan. Um, and let's see, on Thursday, the moon has conjunctions to Mars and Uranus, square to Jupiter and trine Venus. So, you know, Thursday and Friday overall up until um, the, the moon is void all day Friday, but Thursday is a beautiful day to get things done. Um, you know, eat good food, enjoy, you know, enjoy yourself, enjoy being home. Um, you know, and, and also just, you know, get a lot of stuff done and out the door. Uh, the moon on Friday void at 128 p.m. And it is void all the way until 1143 at night. So a really long void moon on Friday. Um, and it goes into Gemini at 1143. There is a, let's see, the moon has sextiles to, a sextile to Neptune and a square to Mercury um, early in the morning on Friday. Um, still making this, you know, let's pay attention to the news with that square to Mercury at 559 a.m. Um, you know, let's see what, you know, let's see what kind of news gets delivered. And uh, the moon is in Gemini all day Saturday and Sunday going void at 11.17 p.m. with a trine to Mercury. So it really makes next weekend a whole lot about the news and a lot about the information that we receive. Um, it should be good. Well, even if even if it has a little bit of um, contention or a little bit of like a, a negative connotation to the news, um, that there's just there's positive closing aspects, so a positive ending to the story. Um, so that makes next weekend great, great for connection, great for podcasting, great for publishing, um, great for working with your your close network um, to to accomplish something, accomplish a common goal. Um, let's see. the The moon is void until Monday morning when it goes into Cancer at ten fifty two in the morning, and uh, that. Cancer moon goes void with an opposition to Pluto. So the beginning of next, the next week is, it's a little, it's a little contentious, a lot, but very enlightening with that opposition to Pluto, um, transformative and enlightening. Now, as far as the planetary transits go, happy birthday to the Aquarians, because on Tuesday, the 19th at 1240 PM, the sun enters Aquarius. So it is Aqua officially Aquarius season. And we are going to shift now from the kind of more solo vibe of Capricorn, you know, the real earthy, um, goal-oriented mission focus, like this is how I'm going to build my dream, you know, real Saturn vibe. And now we're shifting into another Saturn-ruled sign, but it's co-ruled with Uranus, which is, you know, Saturn, I know you have all your rules, but I'm here to say, screw all of your rules. I'm going to create my own rule book. I'm going to throw your rules out and I'm going to create my own set of rules. So there's still rules, but now we're looking on the more innovative side. The, you know, talk about a revolutionary sign, a revolutionary planet. Um, Uranus has a lot to say when it comes to just uh, changing things up unexpectedly, surprise you know, a lot of changes, but it's also focused on the groups and also focused on communities, also focused on humanitarian efforts, volunteering, um, doing, doing what's right for the good of the people, good of the collective. Um, so that's your immediate neighborhood. That's for, you know, the city, your state, your country. 
th- th- this is just a great time to really connect with your groups. And of course, one-on-one hangouts don't necessarily look like they used to. So Aquarius is also the sign of technology. So using technology um, as, a way of, as, as a way of connecting. And, you know, is it time for... Is it time for yet another Zoom um, hangout or Netflix party or a Clubhouse account? Um, you know, people that are single might be time to mingle online. You know, get your Hinge, get your Tinder, get your, uh, what is the other one? Bubble? Whatever all the dating apps are. <laughs> Whatever they are, you know what they are. Um, but th- this is, Aquarius sends us into a more cerebral, cool, calm, collected, a little, a little disconnected. Um, but maybe that's what we need right now. Maybe we need to cool off a little bit. And, and with the sun entering Aquarius, that means he is going to come and meet up with Saturn and Jupiter, uh, which we'll talk about in a second, because the first of those meetups happens next weekend. Now on Wednesday, besides the moon being hot, there's a Mars conjunct Uranus and Taurus. So Mars wants to take action. Uranus for the good of the people. So there's a mobilization vibe to this conjunction between Mars and Uranus. Um, So the revolution for the good of the people. But I've summed this up as equality, justice, freedom for all. So that vibe is really present on the 20th. But that Aries moon with the square to Pluto is really going to, you know, which version, which groups do you vibe with, you know, and, and where do you vibe uh, with your own personal revolution in your life? What, where, where is that taking place? Where do you feel a call to action to move, to mobilize, to, you know, to stand up for yourself, to stand up for your business, uh, to stand up for your relationship? Um, where's the call to action is what I will ask you on a personal level, but on a, on a big scale, on a global scale, we're going to look at groups mobilizing in the names of freedom and, Let's compare and contrast their mission statements because any earth sign, but Mars and, Tor- Mars and Uranus, both in Taurus, are both going to be exposing mission statements. And let's just see, let's just see what each, each of these groups have to say. Um, then we move on to Friday. Thursday's a quiet day. The moon makes all those lovely aspects, so that's great. Um, but on Friday the 22nd, we have a Mars square Jupiter at 11.49 p.m. So now this is some frustration. This is stress. Mars wants to, you know, put his plan together and a square to Jupiter slows him down, brings up, brings up some, brings up a halt, brings up a potential, just a potential frustration of like, hey, like I'm trying to move, I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to move forward. I'm trying to to mobilize for myself or for my country for you know for whatever whatever your call to action is. I'm I'm trying to move and expand, but you're you're stopping me. Like, you know, so take it as a pivot. A pivot is probably necessary. Lean into the shift. Okay? Instead of resisting, lean into the fact that something has to shift or move in order for you to move forward. And then once you get over that hump, on Saturday the 23rd, we have not only a Venus sextile Neptune, so a great day for big dreams. Venus in Capricorn wants to build the dream. Uh, Venus in Capricorn wants the, wants the goals in order to create the big Neptune in Pisces dream. So get, use your imagination. Um, connect with partners. That can be romantic. That can be business. Um, but a great day to incubate on ideas, to come up with creative ideas, and make an actual plan to make them come to life. On the same day, Sun conjuncts Saturn. So Mercury has already come through for his first pass of meeting up with Saturn and Jupiter and initiating like, okay, you all met up on the winter solstice. Now, Mercury is going to come through and say, okay, this is my like first, this is my first version of what I want to carry out this year. This is my first, this is my first pass because of course Mercury is in his retrograde shadow. So he's going to come through and meet up with these planets another two times. So we'll, we're going to pay attention to this as we build up to his retrograde, which isn't next weekend, but the following on the 30th. But right now he's in phase one. So pay attention to, to the themes that come up between now and the 30th, uh, the people that come back, um, 
anything that feels Mercury oriented, you know, communications, friends, he is an Aquarius. So old friends coming back, old collaborators coming back, um, you know, anyone, anyone where, where you're, where you're working within a group dynamic or you're connecting with others. But now the sun comes through, conjuncts Saturn and goes, okay, I'm ready to move. Mercury gave me the idea now, now that I'm here meeting up with you and talking with you, I know your plan now. So now we're going to start carrying this through. So as he, as he connects with Saturn on Saturday, Start implementing your plan. Now, Mercury is going to revise the plan. So don't, don't get frustrated if you still don't know exactly what your plan is. But let's start working towards getting clear on what your plan is. Now, the sun's going to come and conjunct Jupiter. And he won't do that until the 28th. So not this coming week, but the following week on Thursday. Um, so you have some, you know, you have some time to to think about how you want to expand the idea. Right now, Saturn wants the plan and the sun wants to implement the plan. And whatever your plan is, just remember to tag on the the end of it, dot, 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 for the greater good, because this is Aquarius energy. So it not only wants to satisfy itself, it really wants to look at how your dreams, your visions, and your goals are good for the collective. So that's it, folks. That's the that's the the astro weather for the week. It is a it is a more of a quiet week, um, which maybe that's a good thing, right? <laughs> maybe we need that. Um, but first three days being the more contentious days. So happy Aquarius season! If you're an Aquarius, happy birthday to you! Happy season to you! Um, and we will reconnect next week and reflect back and look forward. Uh, for yet another episode of What's Up Astrology. Don't forget to check out DrunkAstro.com for all the offerings um, for the 2021 Planet by the Planets reading, uh, to sign up for the newsletter, to look at, um, you know, to pay attention to the Instagram at Drunk Astrology tomorrow because there are some news coming out. Um, and if you're already on the newsletter, you already know what that is. And uh, and also Plant Astrology. Get in on the Plant Fun, Plant Plants and stars have a lot in common, and you are destined to find out when you sign up for the course. So again, if you have any questions, hit me up through the website, hit me up on Instagram, um, and if all is good, all is good here, I will see you next week. Have a great week, everyone. Astro love. Hey, one last thing before we go. Who are three people you could share this episode with? Who would benefit from learning astrology in real time, from learning how to work with the energy of the cosmos, from tracking the patterns and cycles to seeing it in real time in motion? Can you text them right now? Can you send that message and just say, I'm going to share this show with you because I think that you would really vibe with learning in this way. I would appreciate it. They would appreciate it. And you'll feel good knowing that you're spreading the love. Let's keep that high vibration going. I'll see you next week. Bye.